mind skepticism. That's okay. Mm. Yeah. So is, let's say I've got a, um, I'm a golf, I'm a golfer, I'm a member at a golf club, I'm a busy executive, I'm a businessman, mm -hmm. um, you know, I play off um, mid to low handicap, mm -hmm. uh, but I've got a lot of things going on in my, in my life. Mm -hmm. And I just haven't got time to sit still, I got, yeah, you know. That's a the, common, um, common uh, complaint people come kids, up with, no excuse people come up with. Yeah, kids, wife, yeah. business to run. Mm. I, you know, where do I have time to sit still? I'll tell you the interesting thing that people do find when they start practicing meditation, and all the time you need to find is maybe 20 minutes three times a week. Right. Okay, and we fritter that away anyway. Okay. Yeah, we fritter like time away, fritter. don't we? Yeah, yeah, watching TV or procrastinating about things or whatever. But yeah. 20 minutes three times a week, and you're on your way to really mastering your mental states and creating more awareness. Right. But the odd thing that happens when people start practicing meditation is that you can play around with time, you can bend and stretch time. Right. Time is something that's pretty intangible. It, in science it exists on the fourth dimension. It's, yeah. it's beyond here, you know. Yeah. Um, so if you've got a really, really busy day and you've got tons of calls and emails and you've got to go and do your training or your practice or whatever it might be, if you create the discipline where you say, right, I'm going to do my meditation practice, and you give yourself 20 minutes or half an hour to get into that calm, still, centered space, when you finish, it seems like you've got all the time in the world right. to carry on with the rest of your day. Because time is absolutely uh, in our heads. Mm. It doesn't really exist, mm -hmm. does it? Because you can be in a bank for five minutes, but it feels like an hour. Yeah. Sure. And then you can be with somebody and an hour feels like yeah. five minutes. Yeah. And the mind gets overloaded with, mm. with this constant stimulus, constant information, constant input. You've got your mobile, you've got e e emails, people who can get hold of you wherever you are. If you just switch it all off and s send your mind back to its default state, mm. where it's just ticking over nicely, just breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. When you finish, You've got a clear head, yeah. and you've got so much more room in your head, and you're no longer overloaded. Yeah. And as I say, it seems like you've got all the time in the world to carry on with the rest of your day. Right. So it creates a good feeling. Very good. Yeah. And in terms of um, the coaches, because it would be great to be able to get to all the golfers, but mm -hmm. um, I know you're doing some work with the PGA, yeah. um, and there's been. Um, some very good responses to that and you had an invitation to the Swedish PGA mm -hmm. um, so obviously there were two you know highly regarded golf associations yep. um, the coaches what's your what's your take on the coaches knowing this information what, what do you mean exactly. in terms of um, do you think that the coaches should have these tools or should they, should they be incorporating it into yeah, definitely because like I said before if you can help somebody to create more awareness then their golf game is going to naturally improve. I mean, Fred Shoemaker, an extraordinary golf, he says that the one big skill that golfers actually need is to narrow that gap between what they think they're doing and what they're really doing. And the key to that is awareness. Yeah. So helping golfers to be aware of how they're standing, mm -hmm. how they're walking, how they're breathing, what the uh, expression is like on their face maybe, whether they're breathing tight and their shoulders are up around their ears. If they're aware of that, then they can relax, relax. they can centre, they can drop their energy down yeah. to their centre of gravity or down into their legs and feet. So it, it can only benefit. Yeah. yeah. And in terms of, because you know, you've come and presented on um, my trainings, the, mm -hmm. the, the practitioner courses, and how did you find that? What's the, what, how did you find working with a group of coaches who are, are not just coaches but players, a group of people who are quite open-minded and, and receptive to that? Yeah, it's always interesting and the sort of the range of interest goes from people who say, well, it's very interesting but it's not for me, to people who think this could be the next biggest thing in sport. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole sort of range of um, uh, feedback which I get from people. Um, and that's okay because different people are at different stages of their lives and different stages with their own sort of awareness and, and what they're looking for. But I, I enjoy every every day really, right. and every opportunity I get to present, 
and uh, there's always good feedback and the information is there if people want to take it further. And in terms of, would you say it's like a form of psychology um, or a, a form of mental training? Because it's a form of mental training. Okay, you don't absolutely. like that word, do you, psychology? I don't like that word. It's okay, a, it's okay. We're all psychologists. I suppose we are armchairs, well, just so That's why we're on the sofa. Yeah, but it's definitely a form of mental training. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because the warriors, the Eastern disciplines, that's mm -hmm. what they were doing. They it's were about self mastery, isn't right. it? In Jack Nicholas, he was a great one. In Golf and Life, he talks about his skill of self mastery. Mm. You can master yourself on the golf course, master your emotions, master your mental state, mm. and um, you know, mind and feelings and body on the golf course, then you're a winner. Mm. Mm. Well, I think, uh, I think that's about it from me. Great, lovely. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So, for anybody out there, I think, uh, who wants to develop their mental game, Chi Power Golf, uh, James Chi Story, Power at Chi Power Golf, Chi Power Sports .com. Chi Power Sports .com. and I think you'll add another dimension to your, to your mental training.